Welcome back. Joe Campbell admitted he shot Tim Newman. In so many other homicide investigations, that would be all police would need to make an arrest. But this case would not be so simple. And for the truth to be exposed, the crime scene needed to be uncovered from the Montana snow. What will be revealed as spring and the upcoming court case approaches? I'm Keith Morrison with more of The Feud. Montana State Capitol in Helena, February 2016. Into the old Supreme Court chambers... Please be seated. ...came a small, elderly man. Joe Campbell, 70 years old, was charged with murder. Deliberate homicide, they call it here. Accused of killing Tim Newman in cold blood. It just made me wonder how it had gotten to this point where someone died. Worse, of breaking the unwritten code of the West. You're accusing this man of doing probably the lowest thing you can do in Western mythology, shoot a man in the back. Is that what he did, really? He shot him in the back in cold blood? He admits that he shot him in the back. But was it Campbell's first shot or his second? That could make the difference between murder and self-defense. This was not a justified killing, and the state of Montana is going to ask that you find Joe Campbell guilty of deliberate homicide. Remember the crime scene expert who had to wait for the snow to melt to make his calculations? This is him. My job was to independently investigate what could have happened at this particular crime scene. William Schneck, a forensic scientist. What he did was try, with an assistant helping, to reenact events as Joe Campbell claimed they had happened. Lining up body positioning, track of the bullets, that sort of thing. And? Were you able to reconstruct this scene as Mr. Campbell said it had happened? No, I was not able to do that for either shot. But guess what did line up? The shots in the opposite order that Campbell had claimed. My opinion is Mr. Campbell shoots Mr. Newman in the back as he's running from the gate. At that point, he falls to the ground on his back in the death position. At that time, Mr. Campbell takes the second shot, a grazing shot over the hand and across the chest, missing the head. Look at it, said the scientist. With Tim felled by the first bullet to the back, the second bullet travels south to north, grazing his vest, nicking his hand, and zipping right past his head. The only way it could have happened. Was he right? Why not call a legend to confirm it? Legendary expert, that is. The state calls Dr. Werner Spitz. Dr. Werner Spitz literally wrote the book yes, on forensic pathology. He edition. even brought the book to yes. court. I can only tell you this, that if weight has a meaning by way of quality, then this is nine pounds and a quarter. Okay. <laughs> All right. 89 years old when he took the stand, Dr. Spitz investigated the assassinations of President Kennedy and Dr. Martin Luther King and many, many more. He testified more recently in the Phil Spector and Casey Anthony trials. So what did Dr. Spitz say about this case? Just to be clear, doctor, your opinion is that Mr. Newman was shot in the back as he turned away from the gate, some 10 feet from the gate. Yes, that's correct. And then he fell to the ground on his back. That's correct. And then he was shot a second time, landing in this death position. And those wounds to the hand line up perfectly. Line up with perfectly. The big mystery then, according to the prosecutors, was why? Why would Joseph Campbell have shot Tim Newman in cold blood? Well, remember that video of Campbell taken by a hunting party in 2008? We're on private property without permission. We are. Prosecutors played it for the jury to show that Campbell wasn't afraid to confront and chase off anybody who dared cross his property, even when he was outnumbered. You could see on that video that he was not scared of those hunters. And to accept his story that he was terrified of Tim Newman, a man, a neighbor of his that he had known, just seemed implausible. Nor was that an isolated incident. Your relationship with Mr. Campbell, how would you describe that relationship? One word, miserable. And he looked up at me and he said, I don't know who the f you are, mister, but you're trespassing and I don't ever want to see you again. This woman was an army colonel on leave from Iraq, out on a ride with her father. 
when they were confronted by Campbell and his shotgun. Again, he's like, hey, sweetheart, who are you? Both my dad and I told him to put the gun down. We were just trying to go on a horseback ride, and I told him, I'm like, hey, I have to go back to Iraq tomorrow, but he refused to put the shotgun down. And then he started waiting. He's like, this is my property, and this is my property, and can't be on my property. But prosecutors argue that the clearest proof that Joe Campbell intended and planned to kill Tim Newman, his own words, like what he said to the deputy county attorney who declined to prosecute Tim for cutting locks. This was days before the shooting. He told me that if I wasn't going to take care of Mr. Newman, that he would. And this one. He did refer to Tim leaving the top of the mountain in a body bag. Joe's words to a contractor two days before the shooting. He cleared his jacket back from his pistol and touched his side like that. And he stated that the next time I see Tim Newman, I'm going to push him down. I'm going to put him down, Lamont. Those were his words. He said he was going to kill him, and then he killed him. It was murder. The rule in Montana is as clear as day. You can defend your castle if you're threatened. Absent a threat, then murder is what it is. And what could Joe Campbell possibly say about that? Well, as it turned out, lots. Coming up. I'm trying to stay alive. <laughs> so I wanted to. It's him or me, and I, I shot him. I did. Dramatic testimony from the accused. But will the jury believe him? So all these people came into court, took an oath, and have lied in front of this jury. Is that right? Objection, Your Honor. A courtroom showdown when the feud continues.